All right, I believe we are recording. Is everybody with me? All right, fantastic. Fantastic. Real quick, I just want to say welcome, everybody. This is our Passport to Manhood virtual class. Uh, we are excited to have this opportunity to bring this to you guys. Um, we understand that, you know, times being what they are, that since we don't normally, since we normally do this class in a group setting and we don't have that uh, capability right now, we have gathered uh, some of the full-time staff at the Boys and Girls Club, and we really, we believe in this program, and we think that this is not only an opportunity to bring it to you guys, but to have more of an open, honest discussion um, with us directly. Um, so that'll be kind of a unique take. Um, we encourage parents, uh, we encourage you to work through these lessons with your student. Um, feel free to, at any moment, pause the video and, you know, ask them their thoughts on these things. So we're going to have, you know, this is an introductory section, but, you know, as this progresses, we're going to be starting to talk about some more serious issues. Now, with that being said, uh, these answers that we are giving today and in this series are for primarily ages uh, eight years old to 12 years old. So if our answers don't go really as in depth or, or merely as uh, you know, serious as maybe you were hoping, just keep that in mind as you're working on through this. If you have a teenager, you know, between the ages of 13 and 18 years old, we are still working on bringing you that content uh, in the future, and we will let you know when we can do that. Uh, with all of that being said, uh, I'll just go ahead and introduce myself real quick for anybody that doesn't know me. My name is Mike Stess. I am the director of the Boys and Girls Club Okoye Region and or program, as well as the director of Camp Fletcher uh, out by the Okoye uh, River. Uh, so that's who I am, and I'm going to go ahead and turn it over. Jason, why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself? Hey, sorry, I had a little bit of trouble there with the microphone. My name is uh, Jason, and I am the unit director for the Blythe Unit of the Boys and Girls Club of the Koei Region. Fantastic. Jonathan, go ahead. All right. Hey, what's up, guys? Uh, my name is Jonathan Pierce. I am the teen director here at Johnson Teen Center, and I'm excited to be doing Passport with you guys. So, thank you. Go ahead, Jared. Hey, guys. Uh, I'm Jared. I'm the unit director at the Powers Unit, and I'm excited to be uh, making some cool videos to get out to our members. Uh, we miss them. Excited to engage with their families, and uh, I think this is going to be a great experience. So this is, let's do it. Awesome. Awesome. Glad to have all you guys with us today. All right, so we're going to go ahead and just dive right in. Um, and like we said earlier, uh, we are going to be asking a series of questions that we are going to have just open discussion. Reminder that our reminder are going to be uh, geared for more 8 to 12 year olds. Um, and if you're a parent, feel free to pause the video at any point, any point and have these discussions with your student. All right, guys. So first question is uh, it's we jump right in. Uh, what is involved in becoming a man? What does that mean to you guys? And, you know, what do you really take about from that? And while you're thinking about that, uh, what do you think the difference is between, you know, a boy and a man are? So I'll let the – go ahead, guys. Jonathan, why don't you kick us off? Uh, yeah, no problem, no problem. Uh, so, yeah, so what is what is involved in becoming a man, and, and it, what's the difference between a boy and a man? I, I know we, we kind of talked about this a little bit earlier, but for me, it's a process. The whole thing is a process. It, becoming a man doesn't happen overnight. It's not this thing that slaps you in the face when you turn 18, and all of a sudden you're a big boy and you're paying your own bills. It, it's a process. You know, I'm 32 years old and I'm still walking through this process every single day of of learning what it means to be a man and and, you know, making decisions and things like that. And so what's the difference between a boy and a man? I think a, a, probably the most clear difference 
is that a is that a man doesn't make childish uh, decisions, right? A, a man it makes decisions based upon you know what's best, not just for himself, but for those around him. And so that's a big thing for me, you know, um, maturity level and things like that, um, kind of really are the basis for what I see is you know what it means to be a man. And so. Yeah. So that's kind of where I'm at. It's, it's just a process. It's a process. It's a daily walk. It's something that we um, have to figure out as we go along. So, yeah. Yeah. And just to kind of coattail off of that, I think if I, you know, summed it up in one word, it would be choice. You know, it's like a, it is a process, but that process, like Jonathan said, it never ends. You know, you you each day, you know, you're faced with decisions, circumstances, situations, and things like that, and how you handle those things as they come at you. Um, you have to make a conscious choice every single day to um, react to those things uh, as the way that a man would versus, you know, uh, you know, being childish about things. So uh, I would say, yeah, choice. Choice, that's very good. Um, Jason, you go ahead. Well, I disagree with both of them. Um, you know, it's not just a thing that happens overnight, and it's not something that uh, comes easy. Like, you have to make a choice daily. Yeah, I completely agree with you guys. Um, just to add to it, uh, I, I think a lot of it comes down to, you know, kind of a summation of what you all said. Personal responsibility. Um, not only, you know, our willingness to step up and, you know, assume responsibility. But even when things go south, you know, being willing to take responsibility and step up and say, yeah, I made a mistake. Um, I think personally a boy is somebody who tries to cash blame on somebody else. And a, a man is willing to, to say, hey, I, I messed up. And, but not let that get him down, but to say, I'm going to learn from it and, you know, and, and use it to move forward. Um, so I, those are great, great answers, guys. Uh, anything else anybody wants to add before we move on? Okay. Uh, so next thing, uh, how does someone know when they have reached adulthood? Uh, I thought this was an interesting one <laughs> because I'm like, yeah, <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm with you, Jason. Um, me and Jonathan had talked earlier and – there was for me personally, there was never that like, you know, line in the sand moment to where it is just like you got to hop across the, the, the pit of fiery coals or whatever. Uh, there have been moments where I realized, you know, oh, my gosh, <laughs> like, oh, I, I'm, I'm really an adult now. Uh, and some of those are amusing, like trying to figure out technology and how to do all this. I've realized that, wow, the teens and all of them can figure out this tech stuff way faster than I can now. Um, that's made me feel old. Uh, this made me feel like an adult in a, in a amusing way, but in a more serious way. Uh, I think the best moment for me was, you know, early on in my career at Andor. Uh, I, I was, we were on a camp out and one of my best friends from college was on that event as a volunteer. And I just remember having this surreal moment where, I'm looking around around the campfire and all, all the kids are in their, their tents and having this realization, it's like, Oh my gosh. And I just looked over to him and I said, can you believe that me and you are responsible for all of them over there for their safety, their well being, their entire plan for the next 48 hours. It was just a really kind of odd moment to be like, wow, you know, if this thing goes you know, great, it's on me, or if it doesn't go great, or if it goes south, or somebody gets hurt or anything like that, it's, it's on me. So for me, there was never that, you know, lying in the sand and I'm an adult from now on. It was, you know, I've, I've experienced it in moments. What about you guys? I was gonna let Jason or Jared go first, but uh, well, I, think, trying, I, I keep trying to figure out how to turn my microphone on. So <laughs> I think for me, it's all about knowing when and how to turn the mic on. That's how you know. Yeah. 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 <laughs> no, I think I think uh, 
you know, there are some wake up call moments where, you know, you just realize that, um, that it, it's not, it's not a free ride anymore and you got some choices that you got to make and, you know, it's just, uh, I mean, for me, it was, it was when I was a little bit younger and, um, I had to kind of get it together when it came to a job. I kept looking for people to bail me out, but it was my uncle who told me, you're, you're a man now. You don't, you don't have people bail you out. You got to bail your own self out. So that was, that was kind of it for me. I think, um, that it can, you know, it can kind of happen like you guys have said at, at different ages, um, you know, and there's, and unfortunately, there are a lot of situations that requires a lot of our club members to um, assume adult roles before they know how to make man choices. So um, that can be a, a challenge and that can be a difficulty. Um, but like in a situation where, you know, maybe the home life is tough and then, you know, they have to be, um, like a figurehead for younger siblings or things like that. So um, those situations are definitely challenging. Um, so for me personally, that, that was my situation is, you know, you, you have to assume all these responsibilities that, you know, an 11 year old might not have to normally assume. And so that can kind of um, spur along that process that Jonathan mentioned earlier of learning to make those choices um, or people can not respond well to it and reject it. And then you run into some, uh, you know, prolonged issues and habits and things like that. So thank you. Thank you. Buzzed out there, Jared. Can you hear me, Mike? Yeah, I can hear you, Jonathan. Go ahead. We'll come back to Jared. Go ahead. Well, it, it, really, I, I kind of want to piggyback off of what Jared said. You know, uh, when you and I, Mike, were talking earlier, I said some things, but I didn't really. <laughs> Jared just kind of made this point. You know, a lot of our kids are having to make as kids. And, you know, I, I said left us when we were little, um, eight years old or whatever. And, you know, and that was a difficult time, but I can remember during that time, um, things kind of changed for me as far as what I was doing and who I was. Um, you know, I started doing things that, that most eight year old kids are not thinking about, you know, it, it all of a sudden became my responsibility to make sure my mom and sister were taken care of. And so, you know, as just a little kid, I was running around the house, locking the doors at night, making sure all the lights were off things that, you know, normally your dad or somebody might take care of. And, you know, I didn't even think about that earlier. The truth is a lot of our kids, especially, you know, here at the club, a lot of our kids are, are already doing things uh, and making decisions that are really adult decisions and, and things that, Honestly, they shouldn't have to be making yet. And so I love that Jared said that. And then to kind of go off what you said, Mike, you know, you didn't have a clear line of, of you know, from boyhood to manhood or whatever. It, you know, there were things that happened and, you know, you went to, to school and had to start making adult decisions. But for me, I mean, there was a very clear line. You know, and, and we talked about this earlier. I had a week. I graduated from high school and I had seven days of freedom and went with my family to Disney World. And at the end of that seven days, went to basic training and it was like childhood was over, you know, slap you in the face. I'm getting screamed at. I'm having to do my laundry for the first time. I'm, you know, I've got all these responsibilities and craziness. Hey, Cody, um, I've got all this stuff going on. And it was like this newness uh, and it was just wild. Right. And, and that never slowed down. You know, like like I said earlier, it, it never slowed down, um, you know, seeing the things that I've seen and doing the things that I've done. You know, manhood just kind of happened overnight for me. And a lot of that stuff I was thrust into 130 pound kid, six foot nothing in nine weeks, grew five inches, gained 100 pounds in a year. I mean, it was just wild. All of the changes that were happening in my life, you know, um, after I joined the military and then even so on from then, you know, it was just like, okay, at this point, all of those childhood, all those kid decisions that I was making, 
I had to stop making. And I'm not saying that that part happened overnight because really that was a process. I made a lot of stupid decisions and those continued on and I had to learn. Right. And I think the difference between a boy and a man is that a man learns from his mistakes. Right. He looks at his past and he says, hey, I want to you know, this is who I was. This is who I want to be. How do I get there? And then a, a man will take you know, he'll he'll put steps and plans in place to get from that point A to that point B to all the way to Z, you know, successful and, and whatever. And so I think that's the the true difference is learning from those mistakes and putting an action plan in place to to be something more and to be something better. So yeah. That's I, I, I also think too I also think too uh you know a part of a part of being a man is is uh you know, when you make those mistakes that you, that you listen to those around you too, like, can you like submit to authority uh, that's over your life? Because I see a lot of, especially with some of the club kids here, you know, they have a lot of, um, there's a lot of pushback sometimes when we come in and we're trying to give discipline and not discipline as in like discipline to your consequences of your actions, but just like to structure, uh, you know, there's a lot of uh, resistance there because they 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 tend to think that you know that it's not really not cool to not listen, but like they don't they think that they they kind of like you can. I think there's a certain time in your life where you have this mentality of like, well, I don't need to listen to anybody, but like <clears throat> I learned early on in my life that. I need to listen to those people around me that are older than me to help me get through this life because I don't know everything. <laughs> and I think that, uh, you know, part of our job here is to kind of help them understand that, that, you know, Hey, uh, you know, for, for instance, an example of mine is sometimes <clears throat> I, I remind the kids that, you know, that, sometimes their behavior might be inappropriate and they're like, well, I don't, you know, I don't really care. It's like, well, if you acted this way on a job, you would lose your job in a, in a minute because of how you're reacting to something, you know, and over overreacting and being kind of like, uh, sweating the petty things. I guess is what I was getting at. That's good, Jason. I, I like that. Um, and, you know, while you guys were talking, I just had this thought. I mean, relevant right now more than ever. I mean, a man, you know, knows that life isn't fair and, and deals with it. Um, guys, for, for any of our kids that are watching, you know, life's kind of unfair right now. And it's probably going to be for a little while. Um, not being able to go outside as much as you want, not being able to go hang out with your friends. A lot of these things we're talking about right now, guys, you know, you're going to have to kind of man up now um, in a way, you know, granted, you're not going to have all the resp responsibilities that adults are having, but, you know, you know, assuming those responsibilities around the house, um, I, for one, you know, me and my wife are quarantined right now. You know, we've had to work out schedules to say, okay, you know, we've got to make sure all the laundry is done. We've got to make sure all the dishes are done. We've got to make sure because we're spending so much more time here than we normally do. So it'd be so easy for our house to just become a wreck. Uh, and that's without kids. Jonathan, you've got, you know, three, four kids that are running around. And so you can speak to that even better. Um, just the need for, you know, even our kids right now, you guys, this is, you know, history's going to remember how you guys react in these moments right now. Uh, so I think that's fantastic guys. Um, if you're good, guys are good. We'll move on to our next uh, talking point. Let's see here. Um, so through this through this program, uh, we are going to be kind of walking you all through the processes or the journey uh, to adulthood. Uh, we're here to help any way that we can. Uh, in future lessons, we're going to have ways where you guys can. You know, message us, comment with questions, and if you don't feel like doing that, you know, on a public forum or anything like that, please message us, uh, you know, to where we can see those. Um, but we want to help, you know, make the process of becoming an adult easier for you all because it's one thing to just be kind of pushed into it and be thrust into it and not prepared. Um, 
but having somebody there that can <clears throat> help you answer tough questions and stuff like that, because, you know, I, for one, you know, at 18 and even today do not have all the answers. Um, but I, part of being an adult is knowing surrounding myself with people who I know are knowledgeable and, you know, have good intentions and that I can go to and ask for good assistance. Um, so that's the whole purpose of this. Um, the goal of this program is first and foremost to make you aware of what it means to be a man. <clears throat> it will also help you prepare to let go of attitudes and behaviors of youth and to begin to move them towards adulthood attitudes and behaviors. Um, Jonathan, Jared, Jason, do you guys have anything to add about that? I mean, we're talking about behaviors of a child versus behaviors of an adult. Anything you guys want to add to that? Yeah, that kind of goes back to what I was saying earlier about how, like, sometimes here at the club, we we uh, we have to address certain behaviors, and a lot of that is when they throw a fit because you know they don't get their way. I mean, I want to throw a fit too whenever I don't get one way most of the time, and you know there are some safe places to do that. Um, you know, to like just be angry and having emotions is not a bad thing. It's perfectly fine and healthy for a man to feel feel emotions and everything. Um, but I think the problem is is when we tend to throw fits and disrupt others. One of the things I do here at my club is, is I tell the kids, like, you know, it, 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 just because you had a bad day at school doesn't give you the right to take it out on my staff or me. Like, I didn't do anything to you, so do not be disrespectful to me or the staff. You know, and that's just something that we try to instill in them that like, hey, we're here for you. And just because we tell you no about something doesn't mean that you can just have a fit because you're mad. You know, uh, you know, because like if a boss comes in and tells you no, that you can't have Friday off and you would act this way that you're acting right now, you would be fired. And then what would you do with your family or you know, or if like you're in a relationship and your significant other comes up and says, you know, says something that upsets you, are you going to go off and on a tangent and, and, um, you know, throw a fit the way you do, um, you know, but my battery's at 10%. So I might, I might dip out here on accident on you here in a second. But that's all I had to say. Uh, yeah, I'll add to that. Um, one thing that I want to say, first of all, to anybody watching, uh, you know, parents is one thing, but to, to the kids, you're a kid. You're allowed to make bad decisions. You're allowed to make kid decisions. You're allowed to make mistakes. And, and you know, one of our, our biggest jobs here at the club is to help you through those things, right? And to, to teach you <clears throat> about owning those mistakes, and, and like I said earlier, I don't think manhood is necessarily not making bad mistakes or or uh, bad decisions or anything like that anymore, because the truth is we're all human. We're all going to make mistakes. We're all going to make bad decisions from time to time. The difference in being a kid and a man is owning those decisions, right? You stand beside it no matter what the outcome is, right? If it was a mistake and if it was a bad decision, you own that. You accept it, you know, you apologize to whoever you need to apologize to, and then you move on, right? You you don't deny that it ever happened or place the blame on somebody else. And I think that's where we really start to see the difference between those, those kid decisions and those man decisions. And so for those of you who are eight to 12 years old, make a bad decision, make a, make a mistake, right? Your parents are going to help you with that. We're here to help you with that. But at the end of the day, own those things, right? If you did something that you knew you weren't supposed to do, don't argue, don't cry about it, just own it. Yeah, you know what? I did do that. I don't know why. I don't I don't even know what I was thinking. That was crazy, but it is what it is, right? And then we move on, right? We move forward. And so I think that's important too. It's okay to be a kid. And that's that's what we want to, you know, that's the most important thing that we want to, you know, you guys to take away. Nobody's trying to force manhood on you too early. Okay? But the truth is a lot of you guys are having to make some of these decisions and 
we're here to help. That's that's the the point of this whole thing. We want you to know that it's okay to make those decisions and that if you do mess up, it's not the end, right? It's not the end of the world. I've made a lot of stupid decisions in my life. And fortunately, thank God, none of those have ended my life, right? And so I still, I get to keep moving forward. I get to keep moving on. I get to fix those things. And I think that's what's most important for us. We've got to to recognize those mistakes and then move forward. Man, that is you, you nailed it, Jonathan. Uh, you killed it there. Uh, Jason, uh, that was fantastic talking about, you know, it's okay to have emotions. Um, I want to get past this, you know, uh, faux pas out there that, you know, men aren't allowed to have emotions. Guys, I'm going to tell you right now, if I get angry, I get sad, occasionally I get depressed, you know, it is okay to have emotions and it is okay to express those uh you know knowing when to express those is obviously important you know if it's you know the right time and place to express them but you know it is okay for for men not just boys but men to have you know emotions and to feel things uh don't ever want you to feel like you can't uh jonathan you you nailed the head uh, nailed it on the head with that jared do you have anything you want to add to any of that Sorry, I had to unmute it. Uh, yeah, I mean, I think knowing that it is okay uh, to have emotions is important. And, uh, you know, but with that, I think equally is, you know, knowing how, I think it's all about the reaction, you know, like uh, every, everything. And uh, your life be like this, you might wake up one day and you got to stay inside your house and can't go to school like that just happened. So, so it's okay to feel sad to not get to see your friends. It's okay to feel upset about things beyond your control, but how we choose to work through those emotions and be vocal about those emotions, um, that, you know, that's a big key in the whole thing. Uh, so that, I think that this, you know, these videos will be a very useful tool and I'm sure at some point we'll talk about, you know, how to, maybe that's something we can talk about is how to handle those reactions and, uh, you know, move forward with vocalizing how you feel and processing things. And uh, cause I think that's, uh, that's a key thing. Fantastic, Jared. Uh, last thing we're going to talk about, and we, we've kind of, we've talked about this um, quite a bit already, but the very last point in the book, it talks about stress. One of the foundations of the program and one of the key indicators of manhood is responsibility. Um, yeah. yeah, I mean, 100%. Jared, Jonathan, Jason, they, they've all touched on that. I'm just going to read to you guys what the book defines as responsibility. While I'm doing that, if you could look up, if one of you guys could look up uh, in the dictionary and, and see what they define as responsibility, see if it varies any. Um, but according to the book, responsibility means being in charge of something, being trusted with something important, or being able to Choose for yourself between right and wrong. I, I love that. Uh, being able to choose for yourself between right and wrong. Um, and so while they're, while they're looking that up, you know, everything we stressed here today comes down to responsibility. That is one of the key differences between, you know, being a man and being a boy. Um, and I, I think your parents would agree with that as well. And responsibility looks like a bunch of different things, guys. That might be um, taking responsibility for your actions. It might, you know, being responsible enough to be trusted uh, to help out with certain things. It can look like all different kinds of things. Did one of you grab the definition from the dictionary yeah. by chance? We got it right here. Uh, let's see. Webster defined yeah. as the state or fact of having a duty to deal with something or of having control over someone. So personal responsibility would be uh, control over your yourself, right? Self, yeah. Someone being yourself. Yeah, I love it. Uh, Jonathan, we just kind of briefed over real quick, you know, responsibility, what that looks like, what, you know, I know we've talked about it a lot. Um, anything else anybody wants to add before we go on to our personal challenge section? Good. 
All right. So personal challenge. I want you guys to take these points, think about them, and I want you guys to message us, take pictures about how you're taking responsibility, send them to us, tag us, do something. Okay. <clears throat> Point out number two, we're going to start with teams will have a chance to check in with each other after each of the sessions in the programs and say that members will take turns informing the team. So how we are going to do this is by taking pictures, uploading little videos, things like that. Show us how you guys are working through this and update us on how you're doing. Okay. Uh, you can be thinking number three, this is an early, even early in this program, okay? You can be thinking about what kind of man you want to be when you're older, okay? You guys can start thinking of those things today. Uh, and that doesn't necessarily mean, you know, career-wise, okay? I had no idea I was going to be doing outdoor educational leadership for a career. I thought I was going to design cars. What, what did you guys think you were going to be when you grew up? Uh, I went to school originally to be a high school history teacher. Oh, you faster. <laughs> you kind of still are, Jason. Yeah, right. I know. I know. So, not... Hey, listen. When I was a kid, um, actually from the time I was a little itty-bitty kid, I wanted to be in the Army. And my plan was to uh, retire a general. And obviously that didn't happen. Um, which I didn't know then uh, what I know now, but yeah, no, that di that didn't happen. I wanted to be a general or whatever, but um, you know, I that didn't happen. So <laughs> <laughs> yeah, all right. Well, so you guys need to be thinking about what kind of men you can want to be. So for me, I want to be a I want to be a, a, somebody that people can look to as a leader if necessary. I want to be known as responsible. Um, I'm still working on being the person who's known as being on time. That is, that's a struggle for me. I, I love watches, but I don't know how to read them apparently. Um, but I want to be known as somebody that can be reliable on, on time. So be thinking about those kinds of things. I want you guys between this video and next video, I want you to talk about goals that you have for yourself for your future. Okay. You need to be sending us updates and letting us know what goals you've made for your future. Talk with your parents about what kind of goals. So Jonathan had a great one. You know, he was like, I'm going to go in the army. I'm going to be a general. Okay. The cool thing about goals guys is as you're working towards them, your goals can change. That's okay. It's totally fine. Okay. As long as you are with purpose working towards something, that's, that's what we're shooting for. Okay. Well, and I'll add this to that, Mike. You know, that was one of my goals, but it wasn't the only one. You know, with all the stuff that happened to me as a kid, you know, with my father and whatever, uh, probably the the biggest promise I made to myself was a kid. As a kid, was that one day I would grow up to be a great dad, and I would not just be a great dad, but I would be there for my kids. And I think if you ask any of the four of my kids, you know, they may not say I'm great, but they'll say I'm there. You know what I'm saying? And, you know, they'll say they love me. And that's the most important thing at the end of the day. So as far as I'm concerned, I hit my goal. That's fantastic. And, and that's a great example of how some goals, they never stop. You know, for you, being a great dad to your four kids, that's going to go on for the next, you know, 50, 60 years, hopefully, right? I mean... Those goals, you know, some of these are, are lifelong goals, guys. All right. So I want you guys to, at home, you need to write these goals down because it's one thing to say these things, but when you write it down, it becomes a lot more real. And I want you to put it somewhere where you can see it every day, okay? Because if one of your goals is to, you know, be somebody my parents can rely on. You know, if I wake up in a terrible mood and I just don't feel like, you know, listening to mom or dad one day, I want to have that goal right where I can see it so I can have that reminder because guys, this guy needs reminders about his goals. I know that these guys probably do too. They need, you know, little things like bumpers to help keep them on the same path. 
Do you guys have any good suggestions for those kinds of things? Yeah, I do. Um, I think for, for me, you said that about bumpers and that's actually perfect. Uh, somebody told me once that you have to set up guardrails in your life and your guardrails are kind of like your guidelines. Your guardrails are those things that you absolutely will not cross, right? Those are the things that, that keep you on the path that you're, that you want to walk. And so for me as a kid, I knew that I wanted to be there for my kids one day. And so for me, you know, one of those guardrails that I put up was that no matter what happened, no matter where my life took me, I would always be there for my kids. Right. And so I think it's just about, you know, setting up those guardrails in your life. What kind of man do you want to be? What does it take to get there? And then what are the things that you absolutely cannot do in order to accomplish that? Right. And so if if just being successful is a goal, then obviously you can't go out and do something that would cause you to be in prison. Right. Because then you're not successful. You can't go out and do something that would cause you to be homeless. Right. Those things, you know, would be the antithesis that they would be the opposite of, of what a successful person looks like. Right. And and so I think it's about setting up those guardrails and making sure that you've got those things in place that's, that scream at you when you get ready to cross, you know, Hey, if you do this, there's no going back, right? There's no, there's no getting back to where you want to be. And so I think that's important. I think that's fantastic, Jonathan. Um, with that being said, I think this is a great place to end our first session. Unless anybody has anything else they want to add real quick. Anybody? All right. With that being said, guys, we are excited about this class. We are going to have a great year. Regardless about this quarantine, we're going to have some fun online. So if you are a parent and you want to know how to get access to this book, please message us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, send a carrier pigeon, do something. We will get you some information. We are on your side throughout this whole process and we are excited to see where this class goes. I'm going to go ahead and call this one done. We'll see you next time guys.